Hi kids, this is uh, Mark Saxton, uh, Marco Berry, or Marco Berry Toast. Um, and I wanted to show off my dungeon room that finally got put together. Most of this stuff was originally in the garage, but uh, the garage ended up being storage. Um, so I just wanted to show off what I got here because I'm a show off. Um, and I really like my Dungeons and Dragons. Um, this is my Dungeons and Dragons room. It, uh, we turned uh, this back room into the playroom. Uh, this is the map we're using. It's uh, the Forgotten Realms. And then there's other maps I've gotten from uh, either playing games or reading books, uh, getting old editions of Dungeons and Dragons to get more maps. Um, that right there is a really cheap Halloween toy. I got them on sale after Halloween. And um, I got the walls kind of dressed up a little bit. But uh, here's the village that I showed previously. And um, it was a tight squeeze to get in here, but we managed to do it. And uh, it's gotten a little bit more busy since you've last seen it. As um, I've got a few more characters going on. As we go through the game, um, I'm naming them and giving them a history. Um, maybe some seed adventures uh, to go with them. Um, this right here is where I store all my terrain pieces um, and this piece here I got on sale at uh, One World which was like an international shop they sell Buddha items and fantasy and hippie stuff and uh, that was on sale because it had a bunch of ornate dragon pieces on it and I guess they sold out on the dragons and didn't know what to do with that uh, it's a really sweet piece and they got I got a really good deal out of it there's a couple of Warhammer pieces there um, and there's my ruins and some extra pieces there I'm starting I'm gonna get a couple more of these guys so I can actually get a nice orc uh, orc uh, campsite going on and those were goblin that's a goblin campsite there which is obviously smaller uh, that's the tree of woe uh, you can get a lot of this stuff on the internet or at your local gaming store I prefer you go to your local gaming store because you got to support those guys. This was the uh, for this was the uh, there we go. Yeah, this I'm working on still. This is the graveyard for the village over there, and um, it got taken apart when we took it out of the garage. But I'm slowly trying to put it back together. Uh, so that's a lot of fun to add to that. I'm really kind of obsessive compulsive when I do things. And so um, this is a perfect opportunity to show you how bad I am. Uh, these are some elven pieces. And these are a small, these are the collection of my little dragons. Um, I can't get them uh, in with my other minis because they're just too many minis and uh, there's another map there in this here let's see what we got going on uh, more Warhammer and some a bridge down there that is actually a piece for an aquarium uh, and if you go into your local uh, pet store every now and again you can find a really nice piece that should go in an aquarium but it looks great as uh, for train pieces uh, this is my desert set there this is my newest set cost me a little bit of money I think $35 each for each single piece but it's really enormous compared to look at my hand and uh, I've already started using that on our adventure I'm going to put a little magical uh, circle in there to help teleport the characters throughout the fair room um, and make it easier for them to travel and so let's close that up there and go back here and this is the table we play on it's kind of squeezing in here we have to actually go around and once you kind of sit down you're kind of sitting down until we can take a break or one of the ladies has to go pee or something um, there's my miniatures right there 
and uh, I never did get the Red Dragon. I don't think I'll ever will. Um, it's just too darn expensive, and I can't uh, be okay with that. This is to remind the characters to be a little greedy, and I've got all my miniatures set up uh, depending on from where they're from. Uh, astral, natural world, more natural world, more natural world, underdark, abyss, element of chaos, there's some trees down there, and that's my heroes box that they can pick their heroes from, and uh, a couple maps, <coughs> more, these are my bosses, uh, my winged animals they couldn't find a place uh, in the natural world or anywhere else because there's just no room on the shelves this is the Shadowfeld and more Shadowfeld undead shadow dark characters far realm not a lot there but if you come over here there's a few more and those spiders if you look are actually from a Star Wars set but I just thought they were really cool and there was a story about these giant white spiders uh, some adventure I read either second third fourth edition I don't know um, and I like the concept of them and they lived in the underdark so I stuck them in the far realm because uh, that's a good avenue underdark is a good avenue towards the far realm um, let's see there yeah, that's a giant that's a tree. Fey Wild, Fey Dark. More Fey Wild, Fey Dark. Um, this right here is my little portable uh, DM stand. And it's so I can sit here and pull it in. Oh, let's get to this first. Uh, a lot of my gaming is homebrewing. Uh, so I like to throw in like little extra cards. Um, everybody, I'm sure, knows these cards here. And uh, in case uh, the players don't come with their own, they have I have a whole deck right there for them. Um, these cards here I use in case somebody gets a critical hit or gets a critical hit put upon them. And then they have to pick a card and they choose whether it's um, melee attack or ranged attack or whatever they did. And um, then they take, my, they take penalties for that extra... Uh, critical hit damage. Uh, if they die in my campaign uh, they get one of these cards and they have to roll high or low and based on high or low they either get uh, something not too terrible or something pretty terrible. Crushed hit, that's terrible. Gashed thigh, that's a little better, that must be the minor and then you got a major side. And so if I if they roll high or they call high and I roll low they get a major and this will plague them for the uh, duration of the cam the adventure and uh, then they can take an extended rest in between adventures uh, to heal up because some of these look like they might take a few weeks um, these are some shadow fill cards and it's to give you a little madness if you go into the shadow field or the underdark uh, lethargic uh, fatalistic, uh, haunted, you feel haunted, frail, whatever. These are my magic cards. Um, I let each player pick one out randomly. They don't get to see them, but they're written with uh, either 4th edition or 2nd edition magic items. Um, I like to get a little bit uh, chaotic with that. So, uh, there's an opportunity somebody actually pulled a level 26 and we're only level 5. Uh, it's a staff. Uh, he's not trained for a staff, but um, I'm giving him the opportunity and some of my optional rules to be able to get trained with a staff down the line if he's choosing. So he's depending on that because it's a really awesome staff that he achieved. Um, and here's my game books. Um, this up here is the tavern. I'm not going to pull it down because it's kind of in pieces and I just don't want it to fall apart. But it, trust me, it really looks good. And I'll try to get that filmed at a future date to show you all. 
Um, these are the books I use. Um, I think I've got almost every fourth edition book here. Um, I've got some other third and second edition books. There's uh, my Pathfinder, so I'm not completely uh, picky with what I play, but I do have a homebrew when I when I DM. Um, I have some uh, optional books in there, uh, the cards. Um, Dungeon Master Johnny was telling me about his talent. Well, he had a video about his uh, DM Bible, and so I kind of wanted to show my Bible here, which is probably considerably thicker. But as you play longer, and I'm sure I'm older than DM Johnny, you kind of gather more stuff. <clears throat> my uh, Bible is about. Let me back this up here. There we go. Oh. Yeah. yeah. It's about that thick. And uh, it says all the information that I need for my campaign and for uh, house rules, for uh, extra rules. I'm kind of an old gamer, old time gamer, so. I don't, I try to play it as realistically as possible, uh, various poisons, uh, different rituals, um, and I've got every information on this, on how drunk you can get, what kind of booze you can get, what kind of drugs you can get, if you want to get that adult in my games. Um, you can also have sex, but if you have sex, there's an opportunity that you may get some disease, and uh, I was asking somebody on some video about Mordekainen's uh, Black Derby Crotch Rot. Well, I give my characters Mordekainen's Black Derby Crotch Rot. Um, and you don't want that because it'll give you permanent damage to your dexterity. Um, but that's a... If you're a real serious DMer, uh, you're gonna want to do something like this. It's uh, up to you how much information you really need, but it's really handy to have. Uh, for those little extra rules that come around and um, They just don't supply them in the books. So uh, Anyway, this is my game room, and I just wanted to share that with everybody The books have to go into the closet <clears throat> Little crystal ball up there and anything I had fantasy around the house I pretty much threw in here and um, Packed it down as much as possible so I hope everybody enjoyed this. I hope it gives some people inspiration uh, to do their own thing like this. And uh, we'll see you another time.